Prince Andrew, Part Five, Teddy Collection. An article from People.com, ordinarily very much in the stable of Harry's wife, provides us with something written by Stephanie Petit. The article headlines with Prince Andrew's former maid had a day-long training on how to arrange his collection of 72 teddy bears. Yes, you heard that correctly. Apparently, a former maid was given a day's worth of training with regard to how to arrange a collection of teddy bears. This is a prince of the realm, a man in his 60s, that has a collection of teddy bears. Prince Andrew's former maid said the royal was very clear about how he wanted them arranged. Now, people collect all manner of things, don't they? Art, baseball cards, panini stickers, Star Wars figures, stamps, coins. For me, I collect people. I am the people collector, drawing them in, bringing them into my world, owning them and possessing them. But we're not going to talk about the Asylum of the Grotesque, which is where my people collection resides. Instead, we're going to look at a collection of a different kind, teddy bears. And as I've explained, Prince Andrew is an upper lesser type A narcissist, and therefore, what is this affable arsehole, at times can also be haughty and brusque, why is he engaging in the collection of teddy bears. What does this tell us about him through the narcissistic lens and also his behaviours surrounding it? Well, let's dive in. It may not be a picnic, but we'll endure. Prince Andrew's former maid is revealing one of the oddest parts of her job, spending an hour every day arranging his collection of 72 teddy bears. Charlotte Briggs, who worked at Buckingham Palace in the 1990s, told the Super Saw Away Sun that she was tasked with the process of meticulously putting the stuffed animals in their place on the royal's bed and around his room. As soon as I got the job, I was told about the teddies, and it was drilled into me how he wanted them, she told the outlet. I even had a day's training. Everything had to be just right. It was so peculiar. Briggs said there were 72 teddy bears from around the globe, many dressed in sailor outfits. Each day, she arranged the collection so that the biggest teddy bears were put at the back, then placed in order of size to the smallest at the front. Makes sense. Nothing wrong with bringing a bit of order to these things. Then at night, Briggs or another mage used a diagram to put the teddy bears in their designated positions around the room. The small bears were stacked in an unused fireplace, while other stuffed animals, including two hippos and a black panther called Daddy, Ducks and Prince, were placed on the bed or around the room. Prince Andrew's two favourite teddy bears were placed on mahogany thrones at his bedside. It was so odd, Briggs said. After all, he was a grown man who had served in the Falklands, but he absolutely loved the teddies and was very clear about how he wanted them arranged. Former royal cop Paul Page talked about Andrew's teddy bear collection for the ITV's new documentary, Ghislaine, Prince Andrew and the Paedophile. It had about 50 or 60 stuffed toys positioned on the bed, and basically there was a card the inspector showed us in a drawer, and it was a picture of these bears all in situ, he said according to the sun. The reason for the laminated picture was if those bears weren't put back in the right order by the maids, he would shout and scream. According to the sun, Prince Andrew reportedly said in 2010, I've always collected teddy bears. Everywhere I went in the Navy, I used to buy a little teddy bear, so I've got a collection from all over the world of one sort or another. 
Reporter Elizabeth Day wrote about one of Prince Andrew's teddy bears in 2019 for You magazine, recalling an oversized teddy bear in a waiting area outside Andrew's apartment when she interviewed him a decade earlier. That oversized teddy bear, Elizabeth, was probably Prince Andrew dressed up so he could cop a feel, and you just thought that it was Ted being friendly. When I was ushered in to meet Prince Andrew, I asked him about it, she wrote. He sniggered and told me it had been a wedding gift from his ex-wife Sarah Ferguson. Apparently he had found the bear waiting for him when he got into the horse-drawn carriage that he was to take them from Westminster Abbey to their reception. I remember that he found this extremely funny, even several years later after the event, she added. It seemed rather strange to me that a grown man should be so amused by the presence of a stuffed toy. So, what's all this about, then? Well, first of all, you can see, of course, the need to assert control by triangulating relevant appliances using the teddy bears, that they have to be placed in the right position. Now, in the general scheme of things, does it matter if Teddy sat on the floor or if he sat on the bed? You probably say no, because he's a stuffed inanimate object. He doesn't feel the cold of the floor. He doesn't feel the comfort of the bed. He's but a teddy bear, and therefore why does it matter? Perhaps it's for aesthetics, that, of course, if the teddy bears were all heaped on the bed, that doesn't look as good as if they were neatly positioned around the room. So an aesthetic argument carries some weight. But at the end of the day, the necessity of them being placed in a particular position and the insistence upon the same, to the extent that a diagram is being completed, means that it is an assertion of control. And where those instructions are not followed, that offends Prince Andrew's unconscious need for control. It ignites his fury. Hence, it was reported that he would then shout and scream as a consequence of them not being put in the right place. His fury would be ignited by his narcissism to motivate him to react in that way, to think that these people were incompetent dullards, thus, with the absence of his facade, to lash out at them and rant and rave at them. Their responses would provide him with fuel, and, undoubtedly, they would then took the old forelock and go, sorry, Prince Andrew, and get them in the right position. Thus, he triangulated the staff with these objects for the purposes of assertion of control. Also, the fact that he collects them is part of his ability to assert control over objects. And it mirrors the way that he unconsciously looks at people. People are objects to be picked up, put down, positioned. And if you want to know more about the way that we position you, particularly in a certain arena, you should read my book, Sex and the Narcissist, and you'll find the positioning that goes on there rather illuminating. We, unconsciously, or in the case of an aware narcissist, consciously see people just the same as we would see teddy bears, or tin cans in the cupboard, or pictures on a wall, or a television set or a washing machine, your objects. And the advantage, of course, with teddy bears is that they do as they're told. Mr. Snookums sits in the fireplace. Duck, or puddles, or whatever it's fucking called, gets put on the mantelpiece. Mr. Big Balls gets into the bed. And, of course, we had some grandiosity of a couple of bears that would be sat on thrones by the side of the bed. This is all done because it enables the narcissist to readily assert control. And the bear, because unfortunately, kids, Toy Story ain't real, the bears don't wake up and play at night when the owner is out of the room. They do as they're told. Move the bear that way, it falls over. Pick the bear up, it doesn't protest. Put the bear over on the shelf, it will sit on the shelf until it's taken off the shelf. Kick the bear, it flies across the room without protestation. And this is what we expect from our victims that we similarly should be able to pick you up and put you on the shelf and leave you there and take you off as we see fit, that if we kick you, you fly across the room and you do so without protestation, that if we move you this way, that way, that way, or this way, you will do so and you will bend to our will and you will do as you're told. Of course, unfortunately, from our perspective, you don't always accord with whether we want to position you and place you and therefore you threaten our sense of control and our narcissism needs us to manipulate you to get you back under control. But collections are, in this way, 
an observation of how the narcissist is able to control things with no threat to control. By collecting those things, the narcissist is able to triangulate. So often narcissists will have collections of things so that it can be showed off to people. Look at my brilliant collection of coins. And the narcissist will talk about them and they'll get a reaction from people which demonstrates control in the provision of fuel. There's a residual benefit. Collections can be rather um, worth a lot of money. But they also represent a manifestation of control because they do precisely what we want. And we regard you in the same way. And as I talk about the way that I collect people, the way that narcissists collect people, there is that unconscious expectation from an unaware narcissist that you behave like the collection, that you're there like a doll to be picked up and positioned and used. And the teddy bear collection is a manifestation of that objectification of the appliances. So whilst, of course, it's easy to scoff at Prince Andrew for being this age and having so many bears and wanting them in a particular position, it actually affords us a very good insight into not only triangulation by object, the mindset of the narcissist with regard to collections, and, of course, the unconscious view of all of you as inanimate objects there to do what we dictate. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.